Hey guys, how you doing? Today is uh, August 1st and uh, we got a number of projects to do today but none of them are real strenuous. The first thing is I have to change the oil in my car. We got new tires yesterday so now it's just a matter of changing the oil and it'll be good to go. Uh, a couple other things. I got some gift packages from a couple of viewers, uh, long time viewers. Uh, the first one's from Tony and he sent me a new tape measure, brand new out of the box, which I was in dire need of. Um, all my other tape measures, I have two other ones that are hand-me-downs and one of them I actually found in a ditch when I was about, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old. So. <laughs> plan is I'm going to put those two in my car and my truck now so that I always have one on me and the new one's going to go in my toolbox so that one stays here Tony also sent me a forward adjustable wrench and this is different from a pipe wrench um, for those of you who think this is a pipe wrench the jaws are smooth there's no teeth on the jaws and they're made specifically to use on square head nuts and bolts or pipe plugs things of that nature so this is going to get mounted either either on the F20 or it'll put I'll put it inside the toolbox for the uh, the H that I've got on there but I think I'd kind of like to see it on the F20 just because that one has a lot more square head bolts and he did send me a letter it says Ken as promised, here are here is a new 25 foot tape measure and a later version of what some people call the Ford wrench. The wrench is not a genuine wrench like Henry Ford would provide. As long as the wrench works, that's that's all I need. Um, Henry Ford would provide them in each new Model A car from the factory. Uh, it is close in the design of one. I've enclosed five pages of various versions of similar wrenches which I did look through and there are a lot of a lot of old style Ford or Ford style wrenches that are out there um, including some with the Ford script is offered on eBay I'd be proud to see this wrench displayed on your H and used as necessary on all of your tractors with square head nuts and fasteners keep the great videos coming. Well, Tony, um, it's going to be on display and it will be used and I'll definitely keep the videos coming. I know it's been, uh, been a little while since I made a video but I've just been really busy the last few days of this vacation. So, And I also want to let everybody know that I keep your letters. Everything that you send me I have a file for and I keep all the letters in a file. So it's just, I don't know, something to hang on to memories of what I've done on the YouTube so another package that I got uh, from a longtime viewer is uh, quite the quite the package so I'll read the letter first this is from Owen and it says uh, Ken here is the plate so he sent me a license plate from Florida along with a few other items I thought you could use there's a blind hole puller that I no longer use. I have another. It's great for pilot bearings, small axle bearings, and etc. Uh, a jigsaw, which I have as excess. A magnetic block heater, which isn't needed in Florida. No doubt. So, Owen, I can't thank you enough. Anybody that sends me stuff, I can't thank you guys enough. But. There are a few who go above and beyond and it's really appreciated because it just adds to my abilities in what I can tackle properly <laughs> and uh, it's it's like like I say at, at work it's just another tool for the toolbox right it's another thing I can use so this is the magnetic block heater that Owen sent me and it just sticks to the side of the engine block of the oil pan and you just plug it in and it heats it heats up and heats your oil so that's that 
Um, the jigsaw. This will come in handy. It will. It will really come in handy when I was working on that F20 platform, but I got it done and it works great. So this is going to be a, a huge, a huge improvement to my my toolbox. And it, the the guide or the guard on the bottom also tilts at a 45 degree angle, so you can cut cut angles with it, which is great. Um, the blind, let me grab the camera here. The blind hole bearing puller set. Now I'll tell you, Tony, this looks like it's maybe been used once. <laughs> or not, Tony, I'm sorry, Tony. Owen, this used, looks like it was used maybe once. Um, it's like brand new. I mean, this thing's going to come in handy so many times. Uh, essentially, for you, for those of you who don't know what this is, is uh, these inserts go inside the hole, the center hole for the bearing, and then it threads on to the end of this slide hammer assembly, and you essentially pull the bearing out with a few slides of the hammer here. This this hammer handle slides on the shaft, and it really is a lot easier than what I did on the F20 which was weld a an end of a slide hammer a body auto body slide hammer onto the pilot bearing and then pulled it that way I mean it worked but it wasn't the uh, wasn't the correct way and the easiest way to do it these these blind hole bearing pullers are a lifesaver so a huge thanks to Tony and Owen and just in case you guys were wondering, yes, I've got everybody's license plates on the wall. So, they are there. Also, every license plate I get, I mark the name of who sent it to me. Just, just in case I forget, because my memory is kind of crappy. So, anyhow, today we'll get the oil change done on the car. Um, we did paint the fuel tank for the case the last couple days, so I have to go pick that up today. I'm going to make a new valve cover gasket because as you guys can see, this one is not doing such a great job. So I'll make that. I've got some bulk cork gasket. And then hopefully we can get, uh, get these tractors out of the garage today. So, um, one other thing, I do have uh, a little project going on with my Ramsey Relics Tractor Club. We went and a friend of ours went, he, he gave one of the club members a call and said, my grandpa's got this tractor, um, it's a 41 John Deere B, he's getting getting too old to use it and he just wants to get rid of it and wants it out of there do you guys want it so what we did was we went over there we looked at it I mean of course we're gonna say yes <laughs> but uh, we went over there we looked at it we tinkered with it for about an hour and it hasn't run in one to two years and after about an hour's worth of work we got it running so the next day we went back over there with a the trailer and picked it up and I started talking to uh, to our friend whose grandpa owned the tractor and I just said you know I know how it is having your grandfather's tractor and I let one slip away from me so what I would recommend is think really hard about the fact that this is your grandpa's tractor and if if you want it all you have to do is say the word we're I explained to him that the club was not trying to get involved in the middle of it, but we would be more than happy to take it and give it a good home. So a couple days went by, he hemmed and hawed over it, and he said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the tractor. And he's doing it as a surprise for his grandfather, so he's going to restore it as a surprise for his grandfather. And uh, you'll see more of the tractor at the show. I, I'm sorry I didn't bring the camera, but first of all, I don't like bringing the camera to... To people's houses that have never met me. I mean, it's kind of impolite for me to 
for me to ask them if I can start filming the first day I meet them. So um, you'll see more of that at the show. You'll see a lot of the tractors in our club at the show. Hopefully, I can take one of them for a ride. It was a it's a John Deere Model R. Um, and for those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with the Model R, those things are beast. Um, they're diesel, and it literally sounds like an old diesel tugboat. <laughs> it's uh, they're they're quite quite beefy. But anyhow, there's a, a ton of tractors that are that are at that show that both are not part of the club and that are part of the club. So anyhow, now I'm rambling. I'm almost 11 minutes into the video and uh, haven't gotten anything done. But thanks, Tony. Thanks, Owen. Thanks, everybody who sends me stuff. And uh, let's get these tools put away. I'll change the oil in the car. And uh, yeah, I think we'll make our way over to Domino's. So, all right. All right, guys. Well, we're over at Domino's now. So uh, here is the finished project of the tank. And I also got a uh, hand crank, the correct clip for the case. So I can put that on as well. But we think what happened with this, well, the crack was in this area. And then we think when we welded and soldered this crack that it melted some of the solder around the bung for the sediment bowl. So that's what started to leak after after we got this fixed. So, but as you can see, it is quite the clean paint job. So, this is single stage Omni by PPG. So, I don't remember the paint code. Uh, MTK 71282 Flambeau Red. For those of you who are wondering what color I painted the case, that is the color. And I have the, the rim color at home. So if you're curious, I can, I can let you know what that color is as well. But anyhow, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit yet. And then uh, I'm going to put the new seat shock on the, on the F20. And I'll show you guys the finished product of the, the, uh, the platform and the tool crate and the fuel tank. So, I'm also going to be getting the uh, the engine block and stuff from the other F20 out of his garage. That way, he's got some space. And um, here we go. So this is kind of what we got going on. I mounted mounted some eyelets so that I could strap the fuel tank to the back of the F20. Sorry, we got a plane coming overhead, so a little bit loud. And then I just used wood screws with a large with a large head and screwed that to the the top of the platform. And that's where my, oh, a lot of my things are going to be kept for this thing. I got the oil can in there um, for the rockers. And this, this oil can was my grandfather's. And I can't remember what the manufacturer of it is. It's on here somewhere. Oh, there it is, right on the handle. It's a Plues Oiler out of Minneapolis. So... And I know that, oh, was it, was it Matthew that's looking for a, a railroad oiler? Is what he's, a railroad oil can is what he's looking for. I think it's Great, Great Northern, Great Northern Railroad. He's looking for a, a long spout oiler. So if anybody knows of one, let me know so I can get in, get in touch with, with Matthew but let's see what I got to do to get this shock on here I think I'm gonna have to drill out one of these holes 
because I think it's going to have to be the top one. That's fine. That's just fine. And this one actually should have a sleeve in it, but it'll do for now until I can until I can fix it. And I think I'm gonna have to drill that one out a little bit too. So let me do that and uh holes drilled and I'll be right back with you. Alright there we are. The shock's a little a little short but it'll still work so that's good. At least the at least the seat has some suspension now. I'd have to sit on it for you to really see it but at least it's got some suspension. So that's kind of the way the, the platform sits and uh, as I mentioned before I did add a, uh, oops, sorry, I did add a 2x4 to the front, and then I'll show you underneath kind of what I did. I put two 2x4 two runners underneath to kind of tie everything together. If you guys remember that, that one board was split, and then I just bolted with carriage bolts everything together, so... And I'll cut all those bolts off, the excess length, I'll cut all those off at some point, and then we should be done. So, other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, I was going to re-rivet the serial number tag on to the toolbox, but I think, I think I'm just going to keep it at home for now. Just because when I do eventually restore this thing, I want to, you know, I want to uh, put a new tag on it and and re-rivet it on the toolbox. So, but it's doing doing pretty good. We did. Uh, I didn't bring the camera with me, but we did skid some logs over here with it, and it it did just fine. So, a lot of power. That's, that's a good thing but what I'm gonna do oh I put a rain cap on that F20 as well so that way I don't have to keep putting a can over the exhaust but what I'm gonna do is uh, I gotta move I gotta move his boat and then move a couple things around in here so that I can get the engine in the back of my truck because I'm gonna try and sell that if we're going to put that six cylinder in that F20. So at the threshing show coming up here, the now then threshing show, I'm going to have that in my truck and try and sell it. So otherwise, if, if anybody is interested in a, a set of good sleeves, a good cam, you know, everything is included with this motor, but you're going to need rod bearings and piston rings and you're gonna have to repair the block and what I would do if it was me I did this on my case is I would just grind a v-groove in this crack with a with a four and a half inch angle grinder and then tip the block on its side and heat it up with a, a propane torch till it's hot and I would spread JB weld in here and just layer it in and then eventually you can sand it smooth but it's not a it's not a pressurized system, so it should be just fine with with JB Weld on there. My case has been holding for oh at least since I restored it. It's been ten years now, so it's been holding for that long without a drop of leakage. So let's uh, fire up the B 
and get it hooked up to the boat and move the boat so that I can put my truck over here and uh, go from there. All right. All right. So that's the B, and just in case anybody was wondering, it is for sale. So if you are interested, give me a call via email. <laughs> but it does uh, run very well. It's got live hydraulics on it that were added on. It's 12 volt conversion. And then uh, if, uh, if possible, if it helps the sale, He's going to uh, include the include the uh, loader with it. So let me grab my truck here and we'll load this thing up. All right, let's put this bolt back.
Well, I suppose we could see if the uh, the F20 starts. I haven't started that in a little while. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. stroke give it some throttle turn on the spark probably didn't have the carb full comfortable starting at almost wide open throttle so I try to jump to that throttle right away just to lower it down some but it sure does run well
does run real well. I think the, uh, I think I'm gonna have to tear into the carburetor again because for one, I think the idle circuit is still partially plugged. And two, I think that the throttle shaft is hanging up because it won't quite idle down like it should. So I think it's hanging up between mid-range and idle. But we might as well start up the M. And I've gotten a lot of requests on uh, guys want me to prime the tank kind of a similar color instead of that gray color. So there you go. I know Landon, you were you were quite adamant about that for a while. So the I did hit it with some with some primer. And uh, let me make sure the, the fuel is on here. Tony's done for the day. Let's see, where should I put? Let's see if we can't find it here. I don't know how well that's going to stay, but we'll give it a shot. show you the trees that we uh, we trimmed up he's getting he's getting a uh, fifth wheel camper so we had to trim him up at the front end of his yard so that he could get it through the driveway without hitting the air conditioning unit and everything on top of the uh, on top of the RV so you guys can see right up there uh, the area where we trim the trees so it was those two at the corner of the driveway and then those four on the other side we trimmed them up probably about oh I don't know 20 20 feet up but let's put this camera in the in the mount and we'll go through a quick ride down the road
runs well now that that cylinder head is uh, replaced and fixed and it does need to be broken though it needs a good hard pull because the rings aren't quite seated getting a little bit of blue smoke so it's not not scraping the oil out of the cylinders like it should be it'll get there I don't have anything to, to hook it to and last winter it was down because of the uh, the lack of snow so we didn't really push any snow with it just the one time we did a couple passes but that's about it So I'm going to park it back here next to the other ones just for fun and we're going to make our way back to the house and start putting that case back together. So I still got to make a valve cover gasket for it. So stay tuned guys. Alright guys, well as you can see, We have, sorry about that, I just saw that the sediment bowl is leaking a little bit on the A. Anyhow, we have the new valve cover gasket that I made on there. So everything's good to go there. We have the new gas tank on, or I should say the repaired gas tank with new paint. And the hood is back on. Now I just got to go get some gas and uh, see if we can get this thing to fire up. It's only been started a couple times this year, so hopefully there's not a bunch of old gas in the carburetor. I run it out of gas every time I shut it off, so there shouldn't be, but you never know. So, looks like we got quite a quite a drip. I think it's coming out of the, uh, the actual valve for the sediment bowl so we'll have to take a look at that. But Let's go get some fuel and uh, see if this old case will fire up. Alright guys we got some fuel in it. Make sure it's in neutral. Make sure the ignition switch is on. I already gave it a little throttle. So let's uh, Oops, sorry. Starter switches over here. Let's see what happens.
got this uh, GoPro camera on an extendable pole. I figured this would add a good element to our uh, to our ride. It's just going to add some complexity to it.
And I know that some of you were interested in the the way that the steering is set up, so let me quick describe that for you. Essentially, the steering shaft goes down into a worm gear housing. So that shaft has a gear on the end of it, a spiral gear. And then the shaft that comes out here has another gear on it. And I believe, let's see, I gotta think what type of gear it is. I believe that shaft is actually got gears cut into it so that when you turn the steering shaft or the steering wheel it basically corkscrews against this shaft which causes that shaft to rotate thereby pushing on turning this lever forward or back pushing on the top link which pushes and pulls on the steering arm that's connected to the pedestal or the spindle which goes down to the front wheels. It's really a, a simple design and it actually steers easier than any of my other tractors except for maybe the F20. That one that one steers pretty pretty easily. So but this one's probably the best as far as drivability goes. Uh, the the hand clutch is in an oil bath. It's an oil base. Or an, it runs in a bath of oil, so it's very smooth. You can feather it very, very lightly, and uh, yeah, it's just all around. It's a great tractor. Cases were very heavy built for their their size. All tractors back then were, but cases were particularly heavy built. So I think that's going to do it for uh, for this tractor. Aside from pulling it in the garage, so let's see uh, if we can get that Model A going. All right, let's make sure the pet cocks are open. Okay, they're both open. Full choke. Throttle's about uh, halfway. Let's see what we get.
a weepy head gasket. So I'll probably have to do one in here this winter. Alright. Well, I think this video is probably going to be about an hour and a half long. So, I think that's going to do it for today. All five tractors in one video. That's pretty good. I didn't get them all together running, but I got them all. Actually, we got six because we drove Damien's B. But that's going to do it for this video. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Owen. Thank you, everybody, for always watching and staying tuned. Thanks for wrenching with me. Stay tuned for the next video.